we're going to a ballroom history 101. Ow. Cat, cat to the cat, cat. Ow. Give it back. Ow. A lot of people don't realize that ballroom history is actually black American history. Ballroom as we know it today started out as drag balls. The popularity grew in the 1920s during the Harlem Renaissance. But Harlem was a place where all were welcomed. The white girls started to come, and when they did, they felt entitled to win. But of course, the black folks obliged. If you take a look at this article, you'll see that Phil Black is credited as the ball's promoter, a black drag queen. We know that crackers ain't putting a black drag queen in charge of nothing that belongs to them. Fast forward to the Stonewall Uprising in the 1960s. Shout out Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson, the revolutionaries that sparked the LGBTQ rights movement. Their work was incredibly overshadowed, but let's use this picture for an example. Watch the black kids disappear into the background. See? And now we have a pretty picture for the newspapers. Yes, black people's contributions have been whitewashed, even in the LGBTQ communities. And then there was this movie. And that's why all the true beauty is getting done. You. It's in bad taste and you're showing your colors and stuff. I am, I am doing it bad, but I got an, I have a right to show my color, darling. No I am beautiful and I know I'm beautiful. Yes, you heard what you thought you heard. One more time for the people in the back. It's in bad taste and you're showing your colors and stuff. I am, I am doing it bad, but I got Crystal LaBeja decided that she was tired of the white girls unfairly winning over the black girls, so she started her own thing. Black people were enjoying drag parties decades before the 1920s. William Dorsey Swan, who was credited as the first drag queen, not the first black, but the first drag queen, was known to throw these drag parties. Dorsey and friends would dress up in finery and dance and sing for the audience. The cakewalk was also incorporated into these shows. The cakewalk was a tradition where enslaved people would dance around in finery to compete for cakes and treats in order to entertain their crack, I mean masters. At Dorsey's parties, black folks would sing and dance for each other and compete for admiration of the crowd. Not long after Dorsey took these drag parties to Harlem, they were quickly dubbed balls. The Hamilton Lodge Balls, held annually at Rockland Palace, was a must-tend event. The Hamilton Lodge Balls began in the late 1860s. You could easily run into the likes of a Langston Hughes, a Zornel Hurston, a Gladys Bentley. Gladys was a blues singer who was discovered singing at the balls. But the white folks and the black conservatives were not fans of the drag balls. Dorsey was constantly harassed, not only for the drag balls, but for being a civil rights activist. But that earned Dorsey a lot of respect in the community. Therefore, the community stuck beside the queen. Good morning, Revolution. You're the very best friend I ever had. We gonna pal around together from now on. Black Revolution, don't forget about the black queers. Phil Black, the drag queen with limitless talents, picked up right where mama left off. Phil started the nationally renowned Fun Makers Ball, where the crowd would see impersonations of all of their favorite stars. Comedy acts, live singers. One night at the Rockland, you'd be listening to Count Basie. Next night, it'd be a church event. Following night, you hanging out with the girls, enjoying freedom. And that is how the cakewalk transformed into the catwalk. <laughs> and on a good night at a ball, you can catch a cat fight, honey. Cat, 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 ow. The history of this word will be discussed for educational purposes. Viewer discretion is advised. If you report this video, you're an ass. The racial divide between the ballroom scene and the drag pageants happened long before Crystal Abasia in the 1960s. Originally, the drag balls were called faggot balls, 
and the girls never saw an eye to eye on that. Faggot was a slang term made by enslaved people, referencing feminine boys. The term faggot came from the word faggot, a bundle of sticks, a broom that was commonly used to clean houses during that era. Feminine men were referred to as faggots because they were commonly allowed to be house slaves. The colonizers didn't see feminine men as a threat to their families. However, the white queens felt they were above the word. That word was lowbrow. It referred to people who worked for others who were poor and uneducated. They were cool with the word drag queen, though, because drag referred to a Shakespearean term that actors used when they impersonated women, referring to their dresses dragging the ground. Bell Harlem was the birthplace of the drag balls, and the queens felt comfortable there because the new Negroes had no fear. And plus, the Odd Fellows had took over the biggest ball of the year, the Hamilton Lodge Balls. The Odd Fellows are a silent organization who helped push the gay rights movement throughout the world. And big celebrities such as the John C. Smith Orchestra were still featured at the Harlem Lodge Balls. However, the law wasn't a big fan of this new budding gay movement. They made laws which literally made it illegal to be a drag queen or a drag king. Anyone who wore three or more articles of clothing that was considered of the opposite sex were locked up. By this time, all the queens agreed that faggot was a derogatory term and the white girls had started having their own balls in Greenwich Village which were less likely to get shut down by the cops. Phil Black still hosted his Funmakers Ball in Harlem, but the girls were starting to migrate. With more Blacks from the South moving into Harlem, they began bringing their homophobic indoctrination with them. You know, Christianity. Therefore, Black queens moved into Greenwich Village and began taking a back seat to the movement they created. The incomparable Langston Hughes was my primary source for information regarding the early balls. Langston wrote for the New York Freeman, which was later named the New York Age. It was the leading journal in Harlem, and Langston was also an avid spectator of the balls, one of the first people to report on them. My additional primary source for early ballroom information is the Jet Magazine archive. Yes, Jet Magazine. I'm sorry if your history is not as rich and colorful and entertaining. But don't take it out on me.